Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week's episode is the first of the festive season and is made in partnership with the Lil Tigers blog. This is an excellent activity for families to do together and it ends in a sweet treat as I show you how to make edible glass. Let's check it out. The Lil Tigers blog is an excellent place to access family activities, kids arts and crafts, science experiments, a whole range of different projects and it's great to be partnered up with them for this video. On the Lil Tigers blog you'll find a written version of this video as well as access to a free printable version of this recipe. I've put a link in the description for you to be able to access this. Glass is all around us, in our windows, doors, televisions, screens we look at every day, glass is everywhere. But have you ever wondered how glass is made? At a basic level, glass is sand which has been heated until it has become molten. This means it has gone from a solid state to a liquid state. If you've ever been at the beach on a hot day, you will realise how warm sand can get without turning from a solid into a liquid. Now, I'm not able to make glass in my kitchen, but what I can do is explore this chemical process with different materials by making edible glass and explain the science links between the edible glass and how real glass is made. So let's check it out. To make the edible glass, I will need a baking tray lined with baking paper, half a cup of caster sugar, 60 milliliters of water, 40 milliliters of corn syrup, a pinch of cream of tartar, and a cooking thermometer. The first thing I need to do is rub butter all over the greaseproof paper and this makes it easier to remove the glass from the paper later. Then I'm going to pour all of the other ingredients, the sugar, the corn syrup, the cream of tartar and the water into a pot on the cooker and I'm going to turn the heat on. I'm going to turn the heat down low because you want to slowly raise the temperature of this mixture otherwise you will end up burning and caramelising your sugar which means it will turn brown. Using a wooden spoon I'm going to stir this mixture around every so often to make sure it doesn't get stuck to the pot and I'm also going to use my cooking thermometer to keep an eye on the temperature. You'll notice it doesn't take long for my solids to become liquids and once the water is boiled off the temperature really starts to rise. You want to get the temperature up to somewhere between 120 degrees and 150 degrees, keeping an eye on the sugar to make sure that it is not burning. Once your mixture has reached the right temperature, quickly take it off the cooker and pour it onto your sheet of baking paper, trying to spread it out a bit so that you have a flat sheet which will later turn into your glass. Set this to the side for about an hour and leave it to cool down. While my edible glass is cooling down, let's explore the science behind how real glass is made. Glass is most commonly made from sand which contains molecules of silicon dioxide, more commonly known as silica. 
To get this sand to turn into a molten, that's a liquid state, it needs to be heated to around 1,700 degrees Celsius. That's more than 10 times hotter than what we are trying to achieve on the cooker. Once the sand has turned into a molten, that's a liquid state, and been left to cool down, it becomes an amorphous solid. This is a solid which is not quite a solid, but also not quite a liquid. You see, solids have a set molecule pattern, whereas with liquids, the pattern of the molecules is a lot more random. In glass, what you get is a solid, but made up of a random pattern of molecules, and that is why it's called an amorphous solid. Now, there are lots of different ways to treat glass and to get it different colours. I'm just looking at the most basic way to make a simple sheet of glass. Now that I've left my sheet of glass for an hour to cool down, I'm going to carefully peel it off the baking paper, lift it up and try to look through it. You'll notice that you can see shapes, colours and patterns through it. Though it is not completely clear glass, it has come out more like fogged glass that you get on lots of different types of windows. It is still quite a difference from the sugar that it started off being. You'll notice that when we pour the sugar into the pot, it is made up of lots of very fine grains, just like the fine grains of sand, and you cannot see through the sugar. However, once it is mixed with the other ingredients, heated up, poured out and left to cool down, you do get a semi-transparent sheet that you can see through, though mine is a wee bit fogged. The other cool thing about this is it will actually react like glass. So if I pick it up, hold it in the air and let it go, you'll see that it shatters just like a pane of real glass wood. To make it a bit more Christmassy, you could use some Christmas cookie cutters and apply some food colouring to your baking paper, so that when you pour in your molten sugar, you'll see that it is going to form into the shapes of these cookie cutters, but also the sugar and the food colouring are going to run and make a nice pattern on the glass. I left my Christmas glass overnight to cool down, but I've noticed this morning that it is still not entirely solid like glass because the food colouring has stopped at hardening the way the glass did without the food colouring, so that is something to be aware of. I was, however, able to pull out the snowman shape. It's just tricky to then remove from the cookie cutter because they were metal cutters and the sugar has got stuck to them. This is your chance to extend this task further by exploring different ways that you could make patterns in your glass. My cookie cutters got a bit stuck and I think that's because they're metal. So you could try cookie cutters made of different materials, or you could try and form your own patterns using things like wooden skewers or whatever you have around the house that you think will work. Just be mindful that the sugar is going to get stuck to them, so whatever you use, you will need to wash thoroughly to get all that stickiness off the materials. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the Lil Tigers blog where you can get access to a written version of this video and also a free printable version of the recipe. I've put the link in the description for you to check that out. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demos I've done so far, here to my STEM career interviews, and here to my robot review videos. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring edible glass.